Hello everyone and welcome back! Let's introduce a new Angular feature, multi-slot projection. So let's have a look, we are going to open the model. Here is what we would like to implement. We would like to implement here a closing mechanism for this model. We would like to implement here a small cross icon that whenever we click it, the model will be closed. So it's a very common functionality. There are many third-party libraries such as Font Awesome or the Google Material Icons for implementing such close icon. For example, here we are already using in our index.html the Font Awesome icons and they are here so that we can have this Font Awesome input and we have the icons here available. So here at the level of the modal component, we would not want to have to bring a third-party dependency, a SVG font dependency, in order to be able to have the close icon. So the way that we are going to implement this is, we are going to provide the possibility here at the level of the public API of the model, we are going to give here the possibility of specifying a custom close icon. So let's see what that would look like. We are going to provide here at the level of the content of the model, we are going to provide the icon tag. So this is the ancient italic formatting tag that has been meanwhile reused for icons. It's a very common pattern. So we are going to define here an icon tag. And let's say that this icon tag would have the font awesome and font awesome times icon. So this corresponds to a little cross, as we will see. Now what the modal component will do is, here in the template, uh, here at the level of the modal body, we are going to take via projection, we are going to take that icon tag and we are going to use ng content as we have used before but we are going to add here a content selector property. So we are going to select here the icon tags that are present here in the content part of the model. So in this case, this would correspond only to this icon tag right here. And this would not interfere here with the use of ng content. So the way that this works is ng content will take everything that was not selected by any of the selectors. So if we go back here and we take here the content of the tab panel, let's remove this from inside the template and let's switch it back here to the content part of the model. So what will happen is that this selector here at the level of the header of the model body, using this select property, is going to query the content part and it's going to retrieve the icon, the close icon, and then ng content will take everything else on the content of the model that did not correspond to any selectors. So we could have multiple types of selectors, we could do a selector based on a given attribute property, we could have selectors based on CSS classes, this time we have used a selector based on a particular HTML element, the icon element. So before trying this out, let's switch here to the application component and we were still passing here accidentally the body property. So we were passing in here an empty template. By removing the body property, the content of the model will come now via ng content. So let's try this out. If we open here the model, we are going to see that we have here indeed a close icon. As we can see, this projection slot here is projecting here the icon, which is coming here from the content part of the model, and the rest corresponds to this template here, where we are projecting the reminder of the content here via ng-content. So if we now go back here to the application component, let's see that this is still working if we pass a template. So let's remove this here from the content part of the model, and let's paste it back here at the level of the template. Now we need the property body again, so we need to pass in the authentication modal body via this template reference property here. So let's try this out. If we open the model, we can see that everything is still working as expected, but now the body of the model is coming from the template and not via this default projection slot. Now with this in place, uh, let's now implement the closing functionality of the close icon, but before doing so, let's fix its positioning. 
So what we want to do in this case is we want to position the icon here to the top right. So that is the typical positioning of the close icon. In order to do so, let's add here a div here at the level of the close icon that is going to wrap the projected content, the projected icon element. We're going to add here a class. We're going to call it close icon simply. And given this class, we are now going to add here some styles that are going to be applicable to projected content. So as we have seen before, in order to define such a style, we start with the host modifier. Then we apply here the CSS class of the div to which we want to limit our styling. We are going to use the deep modifier and we are going to target all the icon tags inside the closed icon div. And this will affect both the projected icons or any icons that we might have added manually to the template. So in this case, there are only projected icons via this projection slot here. So the styles that we are going to add is we are going to simply say that the position of this icon is going to be fixed. And let's leave a small amount of space to the top and to the right of the close icon. We are going to leave five pixels for both sides. Now let's add also a little bit of styling to the close icon div itself. So let's set it to 100% and let's give it a height of let's say 20 pixels. So let's see how this looks like on the screen. If we now open the model, we are going to see that the close icon is now being displayed correctly as expected. We can also add here some styling to the cursor. So let's say that a pointer should be displayed whenever we hover over the close icon. So with this styling in place, let's see how can we implement the functionality for closing the model upon click. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go to the application component template and we are going to detect here the click event on the close icon. And whenever this click event occurs, we are going to trigger the close method here at the level of the model. So we are going to create here a template reference using the hash. And from inside the click handler, we are going to trigger the closing of the model. Let's quickly rename here this method. So instead of close model, let's hit shift F6 and we are simply going to rename it to close. So this will refactor all the usages of this method everywhere. And now we can use this method here. We are going to use model.close. So model being this template reference that we have just created. So let's try this out. If we now open the model and we hover over here the close icon, let's hit close. So as we can see, the model is closing as expected. So as we can see, our model component is really coming along. We are still going to add some features to it. We are going to add namely the feature of passing it some input parameters so that we can define which tab should be initially displayed, the login tab or the sign up tab depending on which button was clicked. We are also going to do some preventive refactoring to make sure that we don't create memory leaks in programs that are using the model. And we will also add some tests to this model. This is coming right up in the next few lessons.